say around here that we are one house with many rooms, so we want to welcome our whole church family, our Cape Coral family, our East family, everyone who's online, and everyone in this room. If you are glad to be in the house of God, say yes. Yes. Yes, it is so good to be with yes, all of you. Yes, and let me just say happy Mother's Day, as we have said uh, as well, and I just want to honor my mom, who is in the room right now. Happy Mother's Day to you. Mom, I see you. And uh, also, happy Mother's Day to my amazing wife. Come on, the mom of this house. Babe, I'm so proud of you. Wow. Thank you. Such an honor. I love you all. I love uh, love just being with all of you. Hey, we had an incredible weekend, didn't we, sisterhood and brotherhood? Uh, wow, uh, the beautiful conference was incredible. Over 1,250 people in the arena together. Uh, the women, the brothers serving. Uh, we saw salvations. We saw healings. We saw people say yes to Jesus. We saw people celebrating that a year ago at conference they said yes to Jesus. And they were bringing their friends who are now saying yes to Jesus. It was amazing. We're hearing so many testimonies. And I just want to thank the brotherhood, specifically the real men who served us women all weekend long. We love you. We honor you. Thank you so much. Uh, we also uh, just had a goal uh, to sponsor uh, girls from uh, to be released from poverty in Jesus' name through Compassion International. And already we've seen close to 200 girls sponsored uh, this yes. weekend. So we are just celebrating that too. It was yes. awesome. My goodness, what an amazing weekend we are having. And we're not done yet. And so, man, do we have a treat for all of you today. And ladies, if you were beautiful, you already know. Because when Pastor Andy Andrew agreed to come and speak at Beautiful Conference, we said, well, would you stay over and preach on Sunday? And she said yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait. Pastor Andy is such a prophetic voice to uh, the body of Christ at large. And she and her husband, Paul, actually were the founding and lead pastors of Liberty Church in New York City. In 2010, they planted uh, Liberty Church in New York City. That's some tough soil right there, everybody. And uh, God called them, and they were so faithful for 12 years, and, and then just recently transitioned that uh, their church to new leadership so that Andy could focus full-time on being a prophetic voice uh, to the body of Christ at large and her husband, Paul, uh, so that he could be a part of pastoring pastors and ministry leaders in Next Level Church. You know that's so close to our heart uh, as well. So we love them. We're so thankful for Paul and Andy. And uh, she's uh, not only a speaker, but she is an author. And so she's written three books. The first book is called She is Free. Uh, on, and freedom. sisters, this book is unbelievable. Her second book is called Fake or Follower. And, uh, and fellas, let me just tell you, you need this book. Okay, so here's the bad news. The bad news is we don't have those in-house because they sold out at the conference this yes. weekend. Okay, but you can get those on Amazon, so that's good. Yes, go to However, Amazon. we have a few copies of her book called Friendship is Complicated at all of our locations today. So while supplies last, make sure uh, you grab this book. And let me just uh, make a, a comment about this because here's what I think. I think it's possible that while Pastor Andy is ministering and preaching today, that God's not only going to just prompt and stir your heart about something, but God's going to put the face of a friend in your mind. And so here's what I want to challenge you to do. Some of you don't need to buy one copy of this book. You need to buy two copies and keep one for yourself and then give the other one, sow the other one into a friend, into a relationship that you've been investing in. And I just believe this is going to be a right now word for some people that we're in friendship or relationship with, or maybe there's there's been some strain in your relationship. So let me just encourage you that while supplies last at all three of our locations today. Hey, come on. Are you ready for the word of God? Without further ado, come on, Next Level Church. Put your hands together and welcome Pastor Andy Andrew. So good to see you guys this morning. And can we just welcome the overflow as well? I heard that there's overflow happening, so we welcome you as well. Um, and to all of the campuses, everybody here. Hi, you guys look so beautiful. You look amazing and handsome, of course. <laughs> oh, I just, um, I have to say it every service because your pastors are pivotal in our story. And um, they have greatly encouraged us in our journey. We were terrified to plant a church. 
And they just looked us in the eye and they truly saw us and loved us and prayed over us and prophesied over us and kicked us out of the nest and said, you got this. And even now in this season, this new season, I am able to sit with them and be vulnerable and terrified. Anybody else still terrified to be vulnerable sometime? <laughs> oh! <laughs> But knowing that they're good soil, safe ground, they're real Christians, guys. You have some real Christian pastors. I just needed you guys to know that. If you were wondering, but I just honor you and thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything. And um, let me just show you my humans. Can I show you my people? I know the ladies got to see them, but uh, I just got the cutest picture for my husband and my three sons. Okay, there's my people. I know they're far away. But I married an Australian, so he does have the accent, and it is wonderful. So I lived there for 10 years. We had our first three kids there, so they're all dual citizens. And then we had one American-born child in Brooklyn. So I told the ladies he's the only one that can be the president of the United States. The rest, um, they're just, you know, they're half Australian too. No, just kidding. Um, but so all my kids, I've got a 17, a 16, a 14, almost 15-year-old, and then a 10, almost 11-year-old. So... Um, Zeke, Jesse, Finley, and Sam, and my husband is Paul. And I just got this photo of my boys, because my daughter is here. She's probably still sleeping. Um, and my mom is with me too, but they're back at the hotel. Uh, so I get to, we get to have a ladies weekend for Mother's Day, but I just got the cutest picture. I should show you guys, but I didn't give it to the guys, but of my husband and sons holding up a happy Mother's Day sign at our church. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, it's just good to be here with you guys. And I'm believing that um, the Holy Spirit is gonna greatly encourage you and challenge you and love you and show you revelation this morning. So Holy Spirit, I yield to you. And I ask that you would do what only you can do. <laughs> I thank you that you're already present. But Jesus, you are high and lifted up in, in this time. I glorify you. And Lord, I just ask that you would silence my mouth and say, don't say that and release words that you do wanna say, I'm yielded. So I get out of the way and I ask for you to speak to your people, encourage your people this morning in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right, who's ready? Okay, so I, um, if you are taking notes this morning, my message is simply called Be Prepared. Be prepared. How many of you are the people in the room that you're prepared for anything and everyone always comes to you to ask you for all the things, right? There are some of you, and then who are the people in the room that nobody comes to because you're never prepared and you're like, the, you're like, I'm not even gonna say it. Um, you're a little laid back. You're not really ready for many things. Well, isn't it interesting? Do you find that, you know, when we ask God, God, I am crying out to you and you want God to move in your life and you're praying and isn't it interesting how God answers your prayers and half the time we miss it because he answered it not in the way we asked him to answer it, but in the way that he wants to answer it because he's sovereign and he's God and all that stuff, you know? Um, I just find, man, are we prepared for God to move in our lives however he wants to move? Or are we so in control and trying to control every outcome that God can't even like budge his way in to move and do what he wants to do in our lives? I'm praying this morning that there will be some things in your life that you surrender, that you let go of control of, that you go deeper, that you step into a season of preparation and understanding of what God wants to do. You know, from the time I was pregnant with my firstborn, um, you know, the prayers that you begin to pray are very different. And I... I just knew as they would grow and as we would pray over them before they go to bed at night, you know, we would pray certain prayers over them about their dreams and their sleep. And I'll tell you what, even my six foot three, 17 year old still comes in for prayer. He's like, hey mom, it's bedtime. Can you pray for me? I'm tired. I'm like, yes. Are you gonna call me when you're married? Like what? No, <laughs> don't do that. Leave and cleave, okay? Um, <laughs> that'd be weird for your wife. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I... Um, I love praying over them, but one of the things we have always prayed over them is that they would have their own revelation, their own relationship with Jesus, that they would be so aware of his deep love for them that he would hit them with his presence, that they would follow him because, you know, they've grown up in the church and I don't want our faith to be their faith. It can't be. They need to find and know Jesus for themselves. So then when they start doing that in ways that I would prefer to be on the front row seat when it happens and I'm not there, I get kind of angry. I'm like, Lord, isn't this about me and my prayers being answered? He's like, that's cute. So 
Let me tell you a couple little stories about how my preparation and prayer was answered in ways that I didn't expect. So uh, my husband and I have celebrated 20 years of marriage as of last July, which we all know is a miracle to be married six months, to be married a year, to be married, right? You're like, wait, this is marriage? Yes, this is marriage. <laughs> And so we were away celebrating our 20 years of marriage. We just had a couple of days away. And our eldest three kids went away to summer camp for the first time. Because in New York, we didn't have summer camp. And when we got to our new church that had all of these beautiful things to make disciples, my kids were like, how does anybody take this for granted? Like they were so excited to dive in and go to summer camp. So I would say to you too, don't ever get familiar with the things that your church is creating space for you to grow and go deeper with Jesus in. Don't ever grow familiar. Jump right in. You never know what God will do. So my kids are away at um, summer camp, but my youngest, he was uh, too young to go to summer camp. So we sent him away to be with my mom and dad and my youngest brother and his wife. Now, my youngest brother and his wife, they are those wild, amazing believers. They run tent revivals. They go out on the streets. They get people saved. They do baptisms, and they have all, like, they have these prophets come in, and my parents are helping them and alongside them. They're running revivals all over the nation. So long story short is we're sitting by the pool, and Sammy calls us. He's like, Mom. I just heard this prophet speak for three hours. I was like, whoa, were you bored? He's like, no, mom. I'm like, forgive me, Lord. Um, And he goes and recounts the whole message and how deeply it spoke to him. And then he said, can I please get baptized? And I was like, yeah, yes, you totally can. I got there. Like, you know those moments where he is radically being touched by the Lord, but I was not on the front row seat and the Holy Spirit's like, let me just remind you of something. This is about his relationship with Jesus. You've been praying for this. It's like, okay. So I think we have a few pictures and we've got um, my brother and his wife baptizing him. And uh, and then we, he told us, he calls us afterwards. He goes, mom, dad, he goes, when I went down in the water and I came back out, I felt the presence of God hit me and I started to shake and God started to speak to me. I'm like, that is so amazing. Also, Lord, why was I not there? (laughs) Oh, it was so awesome. And honestly, I would say this to you guys and let you know that he had a really rough year of school this year. He was bullied. A lot of things happened. He had to advocate for himself and stand up. But guess what? That moment marked him to remember who he is And so as parents, I just want to say this to you, that you are the first pastors of your children. It is not anybody else's job to disciple them or raise them up. Remember your job in the home. Amen? Your prayers are going somewhere. So then... If that wasn't enough, a few months later, I'm in Detroit preaching, and um, our church was putting on a women's conference, and I told my daughter, okay, I totally want to be there, but you get to skip school, and you get to go to the women's conference, and she's like, all right. So she goes to this women's conference. I get done preaching in Detroit, and I get down, and my phone is blowing up. I'm like, oh my gosh, what emergency is happening? And I look and see all my friends are like, open up, face it. Can you please FaceTime us? Finley wants to get baptized. And I'm like, <gasps> I'm sitting in my seat and I start sobbing. Like, <gasps> my host, I was like, we have to get out of here. She's like, oh my gosh, okay. I think she thought someone died. But no, my daughter just wants to get baptized. So I get up to the room and they put it on FaceTime. I am ugly crying, like the ugliest of ugly crying. Because my daughter, here's the deal. She, is a, she has always had to work on her people pleasing and wanting to do the right thing. So we've been telling her, you're obedient to God. So she's in the middle of this service and the Holy Spirit hits her. She's not a crier either. She starts sobbing. She's like, why are my hands doing this? And then the Lord is like, it's time for you to get baptized. She's like, but my parents aren't here. He says, get baptized. She goes, okay. So she goes down, is obedient. We have pictures of her getting baptized as well. And that's me ugly crying in the corner on the phone. It's so ugly. It's really bad. And um, these are like two mothers in the faith, two of my best friends who prophesied and prayed over her. And then (laughs) the song, I've been baptized in the water. Do you guys know that song? And the water is wild. Yeah. That's like, (laughs) it's like one of her favorite songs. And she goes down in the water when it's going, the water is wild. The water is. And then it literally, she comes up out of the water and says, heaven's tearing open. Tearing open wide, 
You know that song? Uh, yeah. So she's like, look at her face. She got rocked with the, this encounter with God and the joy of the Lord and her obedience. So listen, I was kind of mad. I was like, wow, good for you. I'm so glad you had a great experience with the Lord. <laughs> oh, how much do we learn that as we pray, as we are prepared, as we lean into the presence of God, that you know what? We have all of our ways planned out, don't we? We can make our plans, but what happens the Lord determines our steps. Proverbs 16, nine. What are we prepared for? What are we crying out for? And are we trying to control the outcomes? Are we trying to make things happen in our way? Some of us are planners in the room, but how many procrastinators do I have as well? Ooh. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit of both. I can be an extreme planner or an extreme procrastinator. It just depends on what the season calls for. And, um, I found that I really need a deadline. I really need a deadline to make sure and get stuff done. If I don't have a deadline, I will clean out under my kids' beds and throw half their stuff away. And they'll be like, hey, where'd that thing go? I was like, gosh, I don't know. You must have lost it. <laughs> you know? I will, I will organize cupboards that don't need to be organized. I will go out and go shopping and mosey around through Trader Joe's for hours, you know, meal planning and figuring things out. But when I have a deadline, I will be getting stuff done. Here's what we know in our following of Jesus, that we do not know the day or the hour that he will return for his bride. But will he find a bride that is prepared and washed in the water of the word and prepared for anything to happen? It's so interesting to me that we have people all the time that are like, you know what? I have a feeling that this date is gonna be the day that he returns. Okay, Jesus is a 100% accurate prophet, okay? And even he does not know the day that he will return. Only his father knows. But I thought about this time and time again. We don't know this known deadline of when Jesus will return. So technically, what could we do? We could procrastinate. We could co procrastinate and find a thousand other things to do rather than be prepared, rather than repent quickly, rather than confess our sins and bring them out into the light. I'll tell you right now, there are things happening in this room and in our lives that we have been holding back, we have been waiting. Today is the day to confess your sin and bring it into the light. Today is the day to make changes. We do a million other things rather than lay our lives down and surrender all, rather than doing the work to heal, rather than serving and giving all, rather than making amends and forgiving people. We do a million other things rather than walking in obedience to the whisper of the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow. How are we going to live our lives in preparation? You know, since the resurrection of Christ, I wanna say this, we have been living in the last days. We're officially in the last days. Like I said, there are some people that I predict this will be, we're in the, no, we have been in the last days. Since Jesus was resurrected, there will be one last day and none of us know when that is. But, are we preparing our hearts and our lives for all that is to come? Are we prepared? Are we ready for anything at any hour? I'll tell you what, I've got my purse, it's huge. It's under my seat right there. Matt's like, hey, you can leave your purse back here. I'm like, no, I need my purse just in case. I don't know what for. <laughs> But listen, I've got a little bottle of Tabasco in there. I have got Band-Aids and Neosporin. I have got hand wipes and hand sanitizer. I have literally got things to help spritz my hair and style it. I've got my perfume. I've got some makeup. I probably have anything that you need to clip and do your nails too, even though that's gross and we probably wouldn't share. But I'm just saying, like I am prepared for anything with that bag to my Oh, I get so annoyed. Hey, mom, can I have the Tide stick? I'm like, get your own Tide stick. Like, seriously, I, everyone comes to me for everything because I'm always prepared. It's always in my bag. It's in there. Just call me Mary Poppins. But what I realized, even as I was thinking about this, I am prepared for so many earthly things. But am I prepared in the spiritual? Am I digging wells? Am I digging deep? Am I leaning in? You know, Jesus said in Matthew 26, 41, he said, watch and pray. 
Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation because the spirit is what? It's indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And I love Jesus' kindness and his acknowledgement of our humanity in that. He's saying, I know that probably in this room, there's not one of us that's going, oh, I don't wanna go deeper in the spirit. Oh, I want nothing to do with that. No, our spirit is willing. Our spirit desires more. Our spirit is, is, is longing for more, but actually our flesh is the weak part. Do you know what he was talking about right there? Guess what? His friends that came into the Garden of Gethsemane with him that he said, watch and pray with me, they all fell asleep. That is what's happening there. How many of you are really good sleep prayers, right? (laughs) Especially after you have those kids, you're like, yes, Lord, I love you. (laughs) The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We start out the year, I'm gonna read the Bible every day. I'm gonna pray for this many minutes every day. A couple weeks in, we're like, I love you, Lord. You know, we're moving on. But here's the deal. I do believe that we, as the body of Christ, we are in a time of preparation. We are in a time of preparation, preparing the bride for all that is to come. So what does it look like for us to prepare? A holy, pure bride washed in the water of the word. How do we do this? How do we live prepared? Because we are the bride of Christ. So how do we do this today? So we're gonna dive in to a passage of scripture that oftentimes either we pass over it because we don't understand it or we pass over it because we're like, oh, I don't like this one. I don't like this warning. I don't like how this feels. But can I tell you what? I love a good warning. I would rather a warning than be like, why did nobody tell me? Anyone? So I love these passages of scripture. And when I don't understand, I dig deeper and go, God, I don't get this. Help me understand. Now, in context, before we dive into Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, what we have to understand is that Jesus has just given a prophecy about the end of the age. And that's when he's saying, listen, even I don't know when I'm going to return for my bride. But then he goes into a passage of scripture that is saying, but no matter what, you are to live prepared. You are to live to be ready for anything at any time. So as I read this, understand that the bridegroom or the groom represents Christ and the 10 virgins are us, his disciples, okay? Are you guys ready? Matthew 25 verses one through 13. So at that time, the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take oil with them. But the wise ones took oil in their flasks with their lamps. When the groom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. In the middle of the night, there was a shout, here's the groom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins got up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are gonna go out. And the wise ones answered, no, there won't be enough for us and for you, go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. When they had um, gone to buy some, the groom arrived and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the rest of the virgins had come and said, master, master, open the door for us. And he replied, truly, I tell you, I, I don't know you. Therefore, be alert because you don't know either the day or the hour. All right, is everyone doing okay? (laughs) So let's dive into this. How do we live prepared? How do we dive into this word? How do we live this word and not just read it? Well, number one is this, it's simple. Be prepared for anything. Be prepared for anything at any time. And this is, you know, about God's timeline versus our timeline. Be prepared for anything. Verse eight, it says, in the middle of the night, there was a shout. Here's the groom, come and meet him. I have never gone to a wedding where I'm sleeping in the middle of the night and get a knock on the door to say, hey, it's time for the wedding. I'd be like, you, get away from me. I am sleeping and come back another time. I guess I'm not going to this wedding, right? I, unless some of the night owls are like, no, that'd be my best wedding ever. Like, not me. 
And, and so therefore, I, I would not be prepared for a wedding in the middle of the night, but this is the analogy. Christ is saying, hey, we have no idea when these things are gonna happen, so therefore, are you prepared if I come knocking on your door at midnight or three in the morning or at a time that feels normal to you? It doesn't matter. Are we leaning in to be prepared for anything? If there were five foolish and five wise, what was the difference? What was the difference between the two? Everyone had oil in their lamps. Their lamps came with them and they all were filled with oil. They were ready to burn for a certain amount of time. All 10 were invited, all 10 RSVP'd yes, all gathered at the bridegroom's house, all 10 had lamps. The outside was exactly the same, but it was what was on the inside that set them apart. It was what was on the inside that made the difference. From the outside, you could not tell the difference between who had extra oil and who was ready and prepared and who was not. All 10 went to sleep. There was nothing wrong with sleeping, everyone. All 10 went to sleep, but wisdom prompts watchfulness and demonstrates preparation. We have to live with this wisdom. Listen, we all nod off at times in our walk with Jesus, right? We all have times and seasons where we are weary and we are tired and we just want to sleep. But how do we awaken again to what God wants to do? See, the unwise, they walked in presumption. Are we presuming upon God? Are we presuming upon him that he will follow in our way? No, we follow in his way. So are we presuming upon him or are we walking with anticipation, ready for anything, excited to pour out and going, God, fill me up because I am weary. Where are we at? See, this, this parable also teaches us something else. There's two elements here. One is about being ready and what do we do in preparation? It's about being prepared, but also what happens in us when things are delayed, right? So I am a classic overpacker. Like I'm, I annoy myself. A huge part of what I do is I travel. You would think I would have like everything down to a T. I'm like, I wear this one shoe and that's all I do. And I pack these. No, no. Every time I have to get ready for, to pack, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to blow out my hair and wear it straight or if I'm going to go natural. So I need to, I need to bring all of the products and the blow dryer and the straightener just in case. And I don't know how I'm going to feel when I get up and to preach. Am I going to want to be short with my short shoes on or do I want to feel tall and bring a pair of heels? You just never know how you're going to feel. And also, you know, I need a pair of pajamas for every single night that I'm away. I don't like to wear the same one. Oh, my daughter just looks at me like, you're crazy, as she packs five things and is ready to go. I'm like, how did I have you? How are you so even keel? And then there's me, you know? So I'm prepared. I'm prepared for anything. I'm prepared for me. I'm prepared for you. If you need to do your hair a certain way, I'll do it for you. Like, I am good to go. So there's preparation. Are we prepared for anything? But then there's the delays, right? What happens when things are delayed in your life? What happens when prayers are delayed in your life? It's the same as people watching on airplanes. We talked about that a little bit yesterday with the ladies. But what happens on an airplane when the flight is delayed and delayed and delayed? I mean, I love people watching on airplanes because people lose their minds. <laughs> I'm like, do you want the engine to explode? I would like them to fix it before we take off. Like, I'm okay with this. And, or maybe you are the person that is yelling at everyone on the, I don't know. That's, um, but here's what we learn about delays. What do delays do in us? They test what's really in our heart. So allow the delay to do what it needs to do in your heart and your life, but also at the same time, be prepared for anything. Don't presume, amen? All right, the next one. So be prepared for anything, but also don't live on borrowed oil. Don't live on borrowed oil. It says this, then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. And the wise ones, I love this. The wise ones are like, no. <laughs> it's kind of rude, right? <laughs> no. There won't be enough for us and for you. Go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. 
that's pretty intense. That's an intense moment. But here's what I have learned and I have watched and I have seen on social media and all the ways that we live in our Christianity and our following of Jesus right now. We live in a day and age where borrowed oil has become the norm. And here's the deal. We talked about the books that I have here. Technically, my books, they're borrowed oil, right? So if you think about that, listening to somebody's commentary, reading commentary, um, listening to a podcast, even listening to a message, if you think about that, that's borrowed oil. But borrowed oil, oil is meant to be catalytic to cause you to go and dig deeper, to read the word, to grab all that we have access to. This is what it's supposed to be. We act as though, well, there's just not enough. I just, I need to borrow oil from everybody else. I'm not smart enough. I don't understand the word. You have complete and total access to every word. You have complete and total access to the fullness of God. When you receive Jesus, you are given the fullness of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is alive within you. Is that not the most wild thing? And we're like, meh, no, not meh. Oh my gosh, this is where the kid comes in. That's what's for you. So listen, (laughs) I'm serious though. We live so meh when we have the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead alive and at work within us. We do not have to live on borrowed oil. If you're going to read my book, you better go deeper with Jesus. That's what it's for. And we have to understand these things. When we read this book, it's about going deeper. The veil was torn in two. We have complete and total access to the fullness of his presence. You don't have to live on borrowed oil. There is no scarcity mentality when it comes to our God. I think Quay is going to come up here with me. Is he going to appear from somewhere? Yes. Oh, I was like, oh, no, he's not there. (laughs) So we have this Herodian oil lamp that is, you know, his exact replica that I got on Amazon. And, um, (laughs) And I love this thing. It's filled with oil, but at some stage, the oil will run out. But there is a place that we can go. And it's not Publix, but (laughs) there is a place that we can go into the presence of God into his word as we worship him in our car or in the shower or in the church or with our children and dance around the house where we receive, we can go and buy oil that is free, but it was paid with the blood of Jesus Christ. This is our gift. There is more than enough. There is no scarcity mentality with our God, but we must make time. We must make room to go into his presence. We can't live on borrowed oil alone. We cannot. We cannot. And some of us are like, well, I don't, I just don't feel like I have enough time. Do you drive a car? Are your kids in there? Who cares? Talk to God. Do you have a lunch break? Okay, great. Go talk to God during your lunch break. Well, I'm so tired. Great. He lifts our heavy burdens. Go chat with him. While you're on your, I mean, he is present everywhere all the time. He is with us and for us. Lean in. There is plenty of spaces and places in your life to dig the wells deep, to have oil on reserve to pour out. Amen? I'm just going like this, like I'm in a boy band. I just was trying to be, I just realized my, don't know what's happening there. (laughs) So... Sometimes I just become aware of myself. I'm like, wow, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> I, I have this little stretch of road after I drop my youngest off to school. And um, I've committed to interceding for this one person in this very specific part of the road. And then after that, I either pray for somebody else or depending on where I'm at in my walk with God, I tend to just sing without even the radio on. And I'll just sing and cry out to God. But there's this one song, You Provide the Fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out the spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Some of you are dry and weary. Drive in that car and cry out to him. Come up to the altar and cry out to him. Sit in that chair and cry out to him. Go home into your room and cry out to him. Wherever you are, there is more than enough. You do not have to live on borrowed oil. 
May the oil that others carry be catalytic to make your fire burn. Because what happens when the oil doesn't run out? What keeps happening? The fire of God keeps burning in your life. So do not live on borrowed oil. Amen. The last one is this. Is stay alert. Don't hit snooze. Stay alert. Don't hit snooze. (laughs) I do have to know how many of you in this room hit snooze every single day. Okay. (laughs) Husbands, it's very funny. The husband's like, her. (laughs) That was Matt and Sarah in the last service. Matt called Sarah out. He's like, it's her. So listen, I am a snoozer. Like, to my husband's dismay, like, he is so frustrated. So I'm the morning person, and he is not. But still, that man has one alarm, and then he gets up. Whereas I'm like, okay, I'm going to have my bird song alarm, and it's just really nice to wake up to, and I'll just hit it a couple times and feel like, he's like, please, for the love of God, get out of bed. <laughs> You're driving me crazy. Maybe some of you in this room, do do some of you just wake up naturally at the same time every day? Is there anyone in here that does that? Your circadian rhythms are just like perfect. Wow, so healthy. Good for you. Probably go to bed at the same time. Probably go to the gym every day. <laughs> yeah. Do you? <laughs> oh my gosh. He's so good. Oh. But I think about how in our walk with Jesus, We've all had seasons where we hit snooze, don't we? We just do. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. I'm tired, God, I'm weary. It's been a big season. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Hmm. But it's like in the spirit, the Lord is sounding an alarm. He's saying, please do not fall asleep at the wheel. You are my people. In the day and the hour and the age that you are living in, please do not hit snooze. I am sounding the alarm. I need my believers wide awake in this day and this hour to stand on my truth, to stand on my love, to show people the way. But if we fall asleep, if we're found sleeping and resting, man, I live my life in such a way, I know, I start to go, God, I am weary, I'm tired. Even just uh, last week, So, you know, I am a morning person. So often I'll wake up at 5.30 in the morning and just have an hour before the rest of the family wakes up. And I find my household just, everyone's a lot happier when that happens, right? (laughs) That atmosphere that's created is way better than mom just waking up and yelling at everyone or make your own breakfast, you know? So, um, (laughs) So I really do have them all make their own breakfast though. They're big enough. So I don't do that unless I'm feeling very loving on a Saturday. But... I realized that um, as I had a book deadline that I was working on, I just grew weary of pouring out in a specific way and just naturally stopped waking up at 5.30 in the morning. Just this last week, the Holy Spirit kind of nudged me in a Wednesday service where I was on my face just worshiping him. He's like, reclaim the mornings, Andy. Reclaim the mornings. And I was like, yes, Lord, forgive me. I wanna dig deep wells. I wanna live wide awake to your spirit. So this morning, that's my prayer, that this will be an image that literally burns in your mind. If you need to go on Amazon and get one of these and put it somewhere, do it. If you need to have oil somewhere in your house, just so you're reminded, I don't need to live on borrowed oil. There is more than enough. Every time you cook, remember, Go, I'm cooking with oil. There's more than enough. Fill me up, Lord. Whatever reminders you need to remember, he is so good. He's so present. And if you're weary and troubled this morning, maybe just raise your hands to him however you feel comfortable. Open your palms on your lap. Raise them in the air. Oh, Lord, some of us are troubled and weary we thank you that your grace is sufficient and it is enough that you have given us and you are more than enough. So fill us up, Lord. Fill us up. 
to overflowing. Father, we repent of the ways where we have fallen asleep and we keep hitting snooze and you keep beckoning us deeper and you keep talking to us, come read my word, come sit with me. And we're like, you know, God, I'll sit with you when I'm done doing all the other things I need to do. And you, meanwhile, you just wait. But may we wait upon the Lord because it is there that you renew our strength. May we be a people that are prepared for that day, the one day, we don't know when it is. It could be in thousands of years, it could be today. We, we don't know when Jesus, you're gonna return on that horse with that tattoo on your leg, looking wild and fierce, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And we don't wanna run and go, no, we wanna say, yes, Lord, we are ready. We are prepared, we are your bride wash in the water of the word, standing firm on the rock our foundation, even if we're a little tired and weary, filled up and overflowing with your love. We just thank you that you are more than enough. And I ask that you release your healing and your presence and your spirit afresh today. In Jesus' name, amen.